two hearts that beat as one Frank Norris, which I put it up as how you ain't never heard about that time that Hardenberg and Stroke, the Englisher, had a friendly go with bare knuckles ten rounds. It was all along O, a female woman. It is a small world, and I had just found out that my friend Bunt McBride, horse wrangler, miner, pharaoh, dealer, and bone gatherer, whose world was the plains and ranges of the great southwest, was known of the three black crows, Hardenberg, Stroker, and Ally Bazan, and had even foregathered with them on more than one of their ventures for Cyrus Ryder's exploitation agency. Ventures that had nothing of the desert in them, but that involved the sea and the schooner and the taste of the great lunged canorous trades. Ye ain't never crossed the trail. Oh, that mournful history. I professed my ignorance and said, They fought. Mr. Man returned Bunt soberly as one broaching a subject not to be trifled with. They sure did. Friendly. Like, you know, like as how two high-steppin' sassy gents figures out to settle any little strained relations. Friendly. Like but considerable keen. He took a pinch of tobacco from his pouch and a bit of paper and rolled a cigarette in the twinkling of an eye, using only one hand, in true Mexican style. Now, he said, as he drew the first long puff to the very bottom of the leather valves he calls his lungs. Now, I'm a going to relate that same painful proceeding to you, just so you can get a line on the consuming and devouring foolishness of male humans when they are a woman in the wind. Woman, said Bunt, wagging his head thoughtfully at the water. Woman is a weather breeder. Mr. Dixon, they is three things I'm scared of. The last two I don't just rightly call to mind at this moment, but the first is woman. When I meets up with a female woman on my trail, I shears off some prompt. Mr. Dixon, I shears off. And Hardenberg, he added irrelevantly, would a uh, took and married this woman so he would. Yes, and Stroker would. Was there another man, I asked. No, said Bunt. Then he began to chuckle behind his mustaches. Yes, they was. He smote a thigh. They sure was another man for fair. Well, now, Mr. Man, let me tell you the whole how. It began with me being took into a wild-eyed scheme that that maverick, C. Ryder, had cooked up for the three crows. They was a row down Gorda Malarway. Same Jezebe named Palachi, Barreto Palachi, findin' times dull in the boys. Some off their feed. Ups and says to hisself, exercise is what I needs. I will now take and overthrow the blame government. Well, this same Palachi rounds up a bunch of Sheehan Serectos and begins pestering and badgering and hectoring the government and rarin' round and bellerin' and making a procession of himself till he sure pervades the landscape. And, before you knows what, lo and behold, here's a real live revolution thing, coyotlin' in the scenery, and the government is plumb bothered. They round up the Jezebel at last at a place on the coast, but he escapes as easy as how. Do. You. Do. He can't, howsomever, get back to his insurrectos, the blame government being in possession of all the trails leading into the hinterland. So says he. What for a game would it be for me to hike? Up to Frisco and get in touch with my financial backers and conspirate to smuggle down a load of arms. Which the same he does. And there's where the three black crows and me begin to take a hand. Cy Ryder gives us the job o taking the schooner down to a certain point on the Gordamalar coast and there delivering to the agent the Gazabo. 3,000 Stando 48 Winchesters. When we gets this far into the game, Ryder ups and says, Boys, here's where I cashes right in. You sets right to me for the schooner and the cargo. But you goes to Palachi's agent over across the bay for instructions and directions. But, says the Englisher stroker, this bet in a blind play don't suit our hand. Why not, says he? Make right up to Mr. Palachi himself. No, says Ryder. No, boys. Ye can't. The senor is lying as low as a toad in a wheel track these days, because of the prying and meddling disposition of the local authorities. No, he says. Ye must have your palaver with the agent which she is a woman, 
and thereon I groan low in despair. So soon as he mentions female, I noted trouble was in the atmosphere, and right there is where I sure loses my presence of mind. What I should, uh, done was to say, Mr. Ryder, Hardenberg, and gents all. You're good boys, and you drinks, and deals fair. And I loves you all with a love that can. Never, never die for the terms, owe oh, your natural lives. And may God have mercy on your souls. But, but I ain't keeping case on this or game no longer. Woman and me is mules and music. We ain't never made to ride in the same go-kart good. Bye. That. All is what I should have said. But I didn't. I walked. Right plumb into the slough, like the mudhead that I was, and got mired for fair. Jeez, as I mighta. Knowed I would. Well, Ryder gives us a dress over across the bay, and we fair hikes over there all along. Oh, as cruel a rain as ever killed crops. We finds the place after a while. A lodging. House all lorn and loony. Set down all by itself in the middle of some real estate extension. Like a teepee in a barren. A crazy modern house all gym crack and woodwork and frosting. With never another place in so far as you could hear a coyote yelp. Well, we buck right up and ask her the party at the door if the Senorita Esperanza Ulivari. That was who Ryder had told us to ask for. Might be concealed about the premises. And we show see Ryder's note. The party that opened the door was a greaser. The worst looking I ever clapped eyes. On. Looked like the kind would it steal the coppers off his dead grandmother's eyes. Anyhow, he says to come in, gruff. Like, and to wait. Uff like, and to wait, apoco tiempo. Well, we waited aucho tiempo. Woi maucho, tiempo. Well, we waited it. And, uh, counting of the patterns of the wall. Paper to pass the time along. And Hardenberg, who's got to do the talking, gets the fidgets bind. Bye. And because he's only resting the toes of his feet on the floor, his knees begin jiggering. And along a watching him, my knees begin to go. And then strokers, and then ally bazans. And there we sat all in a row and jiggered and jiggered. Great snakes. It makes me sick to the stomach to think of the idiots we were. Then after a long time, we heard a rustle of silk petticoats. And we all grabbed hold of one another and looked scared. Like, out from under our eyebrows. And then, then Mr. Man, they walks into that bunkhouse. Parlor the loveliest looking young female woman that ever wore hair. She was lovelier than Mary Anderson. She was lovelier than Lotta. She was tall and black haired and had an eye. Well, I don't know. When she gave you the littlest flicker of that same eye, you felt it was about time to take and lie right down and say, I would esteem it, ma'am. A sure smart favor if you was to take and wipe your boots on my waistcoat. Just so's you could hear my heart A, beaten. That's the kind of female woman she was. Well, when Hardenberg had caught his second wind, we begins to talk business. On, you're to take a passenger back with you, says Esperanza after a while. What for a passenger might it be, says Hardenberg. She fished out her calling, card at that, and tore it in. Gave Hardenberg one, half. It's the party, she says. That'll come aboard off San Diego on your way down. And who will show up the other half of the card? The half I have here, and which the same I'm going to mail to him. And you be sure the halves fit before you let him come aboard. And you be sure the halves fit before you let him come aboard, she says, he's to take charge. Very good, says Hardenberg, mimicking and silly like a chessy cat lap and cream. Very good, ma'am. Your order shall be obeyed. He sure said it just like that, as if he spoke out a storybook. And I kicked him under the table for it. Then we palavers a whole lot and settles the way the thing is to be run. And finally, when we'd got as far as could be that day, the senorita stood up and says, Now, me good fellows. Twas Spanish, she spoke. Now, me good fellows. You must drink a drink with me. 
she herds us all up into the dining room and fetches out not whiskey, mind you, but a great fat green, and gold bottle of champagne. And when Ali Bazan has fired it off, she fills our glasses with dinky little flat glasses that look like flower vases. Then she stands up there before us, fine and tall, all in black silk, and puts her glass up high and sings out to the revolution. And we all solemn. Like says to the revolution, and crooks our elbows. When we all comes to, about half an hour later, we're in the street outside, having just said good. Bye to the signorita. We all are some quiet the first block or so. And then Hardenberg says, stopping dead in his tracks. I pauses to remark that when a certain young female party having black hair and a killin' eye gets good and ready to travel up the center aisle of a church, I know the gent to show her the way, which he is six feet one in his stocking feet, some freckled across the nose, and shoots with both hands, which the same observations, speaks up stroker twirlin' his yeller lady, killer, which the same observations, he says has my hearty endorsement and cooperation, savin' in the particular of the description o' the gent. The gent is five foot eleven high, three feet thick, is the only son of my mother, and has yeller mustaches and a buck tooth. He don't qualify, puts in Hardenberg. First, because he's an Englisher, and second, because he's up again American, and besides, he has a tooth that's bucked. Buck or no buck, flares out Stroker. What might be the meaning yo that remark concerning being an Englisher? Facto his being English as Hardenberg is only half the hoe handle. T'other half being the fact that the first name gent is all American. No Yank ain't never took no dust from aft a Englisher, whether it were war, walkin', matches, or women. But they's a Englisher. Sings out stroker. Not forty miles from here as can nick the nose of freckled yank if so be occasion require. Now ain't that plumb foolish? Like observed bunt. Philosophically, ain't it plumb foolish? Like a them two gisabis to go flying up in the air like two hands on a hot plate. For nothing in the world but because a neat looking female woman has looked at him some soft. Well, naturally, we others. Ali Bazanan. We others throws it into him pretty strong about being more kinds of blame fools than a pup with a bug. And they simmers down some, but along the way home, I can see as how they're uh, glaring at each other and uh, drawing themselves up proud like and presumptuous. And I groans again, not loud, but deep. As the good book says, we has two or three more palavers with the Senorita Esperanza and stacks the deck to beat the harbor police and the customs people and all, and to nip down the coast with our contraband. And each time we chins with the senorita, there's them two locos steppin' and sidling around her, actin' that silly, like that me and Ali Bazan takes and beats our heads agin the walls so soon as we're alone, just because we're that pies and mortified. Finley comes the last talkie, talkin' we're to sail away next day, and me be snatched the little joker through, or be took and hung by the Costa Gardas. And good. Bye, says Hardenberg to Esperanza, in a fainting. Die, a way voice like a kitten with a cold. And ain't we gonna meet no more? I sure hope as much, puts in Stroker. Smirkin' so you'd think he was a he milliner selling a bonnet. I hope, says he. Our delightful acquaintanceship ain't a goin' for to end abruptly this. Away. Oh, you nice, big Mr. Men, pipes up the senorita in English. We will meet down there. And Gordemaller soon again. Yes, because I go down by the vapor carriages tomorrow. Unprotected too, says Hardenberg, wagging his fool head. And so young, holy Geronimo. I don't know what more fool drivelin' they had, but they finly comes away. Ali Bazan and me rounds him up and conducts him to the boat and puts him to bed like as if they was little, or drunk, and the next day, or next night, rather, about one o'clock, we slips the heel ropes and hobbles of the schooner quiet as a mountain, lion stalking a buck and catches the out. Tied as a mountain lion stalking a buck and catches the out. Through the gate to the bay. Lord, 
we was some keyed up. Let me tell you, an ally Bazan and Hardenberg was at the fore endo, the boat with their guns ready in case Obian asked impertinent questions by the patrol. But, well, how? Some ever, we nips out with the little jokers. They was writ in the manifest as mine and pumps, and start south. This her tepicer down to Gordemaller is the first time I goes a gallying about on what the three crows calls blue water, and when that schooner hit the bar, I begins to remember that my stomach and inside arrangements ain't made a no chilled steel, nor yet o rawhide. First I got plum sad and shivery, and I feel as mean and poor as a prairie. Dog, which has eaten a horned toad backwards. I go to Ali Bazan and give it out as how I'm going to die. And I put it up that I'm sure sad and depressed. Like, don't care much about life now. And don't care much about life now. At present surroundings lack that certain indescribable charm. I tells him that I knows the ship is going to sink afore we get over the bar. Waves. They was higher in the masts. And I've rode some fair, lively sun. Fishers in my time but I ain't never struck anything like the rarin' and buckin' and high. And ofty tumblin' that that same boat went through with those first few hours after we had come out. But Allie Bazan tells me to go downstairs in the boat and lie up quiet. And bine. By, I do feel better. By next day, I can sit up and take solid food again. And then's when I take special notice of the everlasting foolishness O. Strachner and Hardenberg. You'd thought each one of them, too. Mush. Heads, was trying to act the part of an old cow, which has had her calf taken. There goes a uh, mooming about the boat that mournful it up, make you yell just out of sheer nervousness. First, one up up and hold his head on his hand and lean on the fence. Rail that ran around the boat and sign till he'd raise his pants and clean out the top of his boots. And then the other you'd go off in another part of the boat and reshad. Then the other you'd go off in another part of the boat and chlined in the coyote. But bine, by, were mebby six days to the good o' Frisco. Bine, by they two gits kind of sassy along o' each t'other, and they has a heart. Two heart talk, and puts it up as how either one o' em. You'd stand to win so only the t'other was out of the game. It's double or nothing. Says Hardenberg, who, is something o' a card sharp for either you or me stroke. And if you're agreeable, I'll play you a round of jacks for the chance at the senorita, the loser to pull out of the running for good and all. No, stroker, don't come in on no such game, he says. He wins her, he says. He wins her, he says, as a man, and not. As no poker player. No. No, nor he won't throw no dice for the chance of winning Esperanza. Nor he won't flip no coin, nor yet wrestle. But... Says he all of a sudden, I'll tell you which I'll do. You're a big, thick, strappin' hulk o' a two-fisted dray. Horse hardy. And I ain't no effet in s- Degenerate one, lunger myself. Here's what I propose that we all takes in. Lays out a sixteen-foot ring on the quarter deck, And that the raw-boned yank in the stodgy Englisher strips to the waist. And all. Friendly. Like settles the question by Queensberry rules and may the best man win. Hardenberg looks him over. Hardenberg looks him over. And what might be your weight? Says he. I don't figure on hurting of you. If so, be you're below my class. I fights at 170, says Stroker. And me, says Hardenberg. At 175, we're matched. Is it a go? Inquires Stroker. You bet your great... Grandmommy's tortoise shell chessy cat, it's a go, says Hardenberg, prompt as a hop frog catching flies. We don't lose no time trying to reason with them, for they is sure keen on having the go. So we lays out a ring by the rear end of the deck, and runs the schooner in till we're in the lee of the land, and she riding steady on her pins. Then along about four o'clock on a fine still day, we lays. The boat too, as they say, and folds up the sail, and having scattered resin in the ring, which it ain't no ring, but a square o' ropes on posts, we says all is ready. Ali Bazan, he's the referee, 
and me. I'm the time. Keeper which I have to ring the ship's bell every three minutes to let him know to quit, and that the round is over. We get him into the ring, each in his own corner, squatting on a bucket, the time. Keeper being second to Hardenberg and the referee being second to Stroker. And then, after they has shuck hands, I climbs up on the chicken. Coop and hollers time. And they begins, Mr. Man. I've seen time. Hanan at his best. And I've seen Ceres when he was a top-notcher. And likewise, several other irregular boxing sharps that were sure tough terriers. Also, I've seen two shorthorn bulls arguing about a question on leadership. But so help me, Bob. The fight I saw that day made the others look like a young lady's quadrille. Oh, I ain't going to tell of that mill in detail. Nor by rounds. Rounds! After the first five minutes, they had wanted no rounds. I rung the blame bell till I rung her loose and Ali Bazan yells. Break. Away. And time's up till he's black in the face. But you could no more separate them two than you could put the brakes on a blame earthquake. At about supper time, we pulled them apart. We could do it by then. They was both so gone. And jammed each one of them down in their corners. I rings my bell good and plenty. And Ali Bazan stands up on a bucket in the middle of the ring and says, I declare this her glove contest a draw. And draw it, sure was. They fit for two hours stably. And never a one got no better o' the other. They give each other lick for lick as fast and as steady as they could stand to it. Wrestling, borin' in boxin'. All was alike. The one was just as good as t'other. And both willin' to the very last. When Ali Bazan calls it a draw, they gets up and wobbles toward each other and shakes hands. And Hardenberg, he says, Stroke, I thanks you a whole lot for as neat a go as ever I mixed in. And Stroker answers up, Hardy, I loves you better'n ever. Use the first man I've met up with which I couldn't do for. And I've met up with some scraggy propositions in my time, too. Well, they too is a sorry looking pair of birds by the time we runs into San Diego Harbor next night. They was fine looking objects for fair, all bruises and bumps. You was fine looking objects for fair, all bruises and bumps. Remember, now, we was to take on a party at San Diego who was to show t'other half o' Esperanza's card, and thereafterward to boss the job. Well, we wait till nightfall, and then slide in and lays off a certain pile of stone and shows two green lights and one white every three and a half minutes for half an hour. This being a signal, there is a moon, and we can see pretty well. After we'd signaled about an hour, maybe, we, be, we gave the answer a one-minute green flare, and there afterward we made out a rowboat putting out and coming towards us. They is two people in the boat. One is the Gazabi at the oars and the other a party, sitting in the hinder end. Ali Bazan and me and Stroker and Hardenberg were all leaning over the fence, uh, watching, when all too once I up and groaned some sad, the party in the hinder end, oh, the boat being female. Ain't we never gonna get shut of em, says I. But the words ain't no more'n off my teeth when Stroker pipes up. It's Sheck her pipes up. It's Shez, has he gaspin, as though shot hard. Woat, cries Hardenberg. Sort of mystified. Oh, I'm sure, uh, dreamin', he says. Just that silly. Like, and the mugs we've got, says Stroker. And they both sets to swearin' and cussin' to beat all I ever heard. I can't let her see me so bunged up, says Hardenberg, doleful. Like, oh, whatever is to be done. And I look like a real genuine blown. In the bottle pug. Never mind, says he. We'll tell her onto the deck. Without saying a word, she hands Hardenberg the half of the card, and he fishes out his half and matches the two by the light of a lantern. By this time, the rowboat has gone a little ways off, and then at last Hardenberg says, Welcome aboard, Senorita. And Stroker cuts in with, with, 
we thought it was to be a man that would join us here to take command. But you, he says, and oh, butter, wouldn't they? Melted in his mouth. But you, he says, is always our mistress. Very right, bueno. Me good fellows, says the senorita. But don't you be afraid that there's no man is at the head o This business. And with that, the party chucks off hat and skirts, and I'll be Mexican if it wasn't a man after all. I'm the signer bear to Palachi, gentlemen, says he. The gringo police who wanted to arrest me made the disguise necessary. Gentlemen, I regret to have been obliged to deceive such gallant a compadreso, but war knows no law. Hardenberg and Stroker give one look at the senor and another at their own spoiled faces. Then, come back here with the boat, roars Hardenberg over the side. And with that, upon me, word Yuda, thought they both were moved with the same spring. Over they go into the water and strike out hands over hands for the boat as hard as ever they can lay to it. The boat meets them. Lord knows what the party at the oars thought. They climbs in and the last I sees of them. They was puttin' for sure, each having taken an oar from the boatman, and they sure was making that boatman. Well, we sails away eventually without him. And a year or more afterward, I crosses their trail again in Sea Rider's office in Frisco. Did you ask them about it all? said I. Mr. Mann observed Bunt. I'm several kinds of a fool. I know it. But sometimes I'm wise. I wishes for to live as long as I can and die when I can't help it. I do not, neither there nor there afterward, ever make no joke, nor yet no allusion about, or concerning the Signorita Esperanza Palacci in the hearing o, Hardenberg and Stroker, I've seen. Yea, remember, both those boys use their fists. And likewise Hardenberg, as he says himself, shoots with both hands.